Back in 2019 is when we first met Ultraviolet and the F77 which was at the MMRT and since then they haven't dropped off our radar but the clip had grown a bit smaller until they started posting some stuff out on social media which got us wondering as to what exactly is going on. So we reached out to them and asked them if we could find out what's been happening and they said sure. So here we are at Ultraviolet to know the team a little bit better and what exactly they've been up to. So the F77 is a sporty electric bike and it was put through an ADV torture test. Why? So we've done all sorts of urban, urban-ish kind of testing scenarios and just because it's electric, you need not have that purely urban connotation. And with that in mind, we wanted to establish and even, you know, um, get some um, idea for ourselves of how far can we push the bikes beyond the roads. And that was the motivation for us to, you know, pick a few really offbeat, uh, abusive locations for the bike. You know, as a rider, when you're in that situation, how tempting it is and that's exactly what happened. So I was there, the testing team was there and uh, they would come up to me with crazy ideas like, okay, here's a staircase. Can we ride the bike up the staircase, not even down the staircase? And it's, it's raining tomorrow, the forecast is heavy rain. Can we still take the bike out on a beach? And my response was, yeah, that, I mean, that's the whole point of being here, let's go for it. But a rider's dream can be an engineer's nightmare. Especially so when the R&D team in Bangalore were getting updates of all the tests after they had happened. At one point we were wondering, are they going to come back with the motorcycles or not? It came as quite a surprise to all of our engineers in the building here. <laughs> when the images of what they were doing with the bikes uh, in Hampi and Chikmangalore and uh, on, on different uh, terrains, rocky on beaches, putting it through salt water, it was quite crazy. So we knew that they're going to be pushing the bike to its limits, but we didn't know where those limits lie and that they're going to go way past any limit that, you know, that uh, we thought existed. And surprisingly, the bikes just held up uh, really well. I know spare the rod, spoil the child is an outdated concept, but when it comes to motorcycles, it works because this punishment showed the UV team new directions and insights. This whole experience gave us a lot of the edge case scenarios that we could not have simulated. Uh, situations like when you're riding off-road, right? There's a lot of time when the tires are not in contact with the road. So how does the controller now interface with the motor and what happens to the power delivery, right? You cannot, the RPM cannot go up too much, you cannot result in a skid when you land. At the same time, say you're stuck in a marsh or in a puddle and you want to get out and you're like, you know, half, half the wheel deep in that situation. How do you deliver enough power to get out of that situation as well? Every night we do a debriefing with the team, sit with the UV team back in Bangalore and sort of they download all the data, they sort of look, look at and analyze every sort of situation where, uh, you know, some addition can be done in terms of the uh, program to cater for different use cases. We tried, we experimented with quite a lot of things and I think now we've gotten to a good balance of uh, situations where we can prioritize safety and where we need to prioritize performance. So, is it going to get an off-road mode? Gotta wait and find out. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the point was to make sure the platform that we built is capable of any sort of use case. Pivotal to this sharpening and this evolution is the gearbox, which has all of one gear. Welcome to the world of electrics. So the gearbox or the motor mount in our case forms a very critical member. It sort of unites or integrates the main frame, the cradle frame, the seat frame and the swing arm. It is acting as a member, it's a stress member. The stiffness of this becomes critical. All the loading points, be it from the front end or the rear end or even the pillion and the rider, give out a lot of forces onto this and we have to make sure that 
it it sort of not only does it break i'm purely talking about its stiffness point of view it lies in the right region so we had to introduce a lot of cross members torsion stiffness had to be looked at this gave the f77 greater reliability and sharpness but it also had an interesting side effect this consequently affects the way the vehicle sounds it is surprising but the way the chassis flexes also has an impact on the way the gears sound it shouldn't be harsh to the customer and it has to sound very pleasing now when we rode the f77 at the mmrt we found that it could do with some tweaks for better handling and as it turns out all of these addition of material in order to increase stiffness has increased the weight a bit however it is on the good side that the cg is going higher and it's going to be a little more top heavy than what it was what what you guys rode back in mmrt today we are at a good stage to say that it's going to be a very sporty kind of a motorcycle now greater agility would make the f77 sweeter but what it absolutely needs to nail down based on our experience of the race track was reliable performance because there it wasn't we understood at mmrt that over the time your lap time should remain the same uh, a rider must connect with the vehicle and the vehicle should not change its behavior over time or battery soc we've been thoroughly checking our acceleration times and top speed and how we can keep this consistent for say x percentage of the battery now everything comes at a price and the price for consistency is we are looking at slightly reducing the peak power to maintain the level throughout there have been changes in the drive ratios so overall it's going to be that it's going to be as uh, zippy as it was at mmrt however in terms of numbers there could be a variation here and there so will you feel the difference or will it only be on paper i guess we'll find out when we get the finished product and the f77 was very unfinished when we met it at the mmrt its display was a mobile screen this time now we didn't get to see the finished product but we did get a sneak peek into the cockpit we have bike enthusiasts who are going to be focused on the riding more than the gimmicks of you know how to interact with the bike through a touch screen or something yep you heard that right no touch screen the display itself uh, the speedometer that we have we've created a custom font while you go forward there's a motion that happens as you throttle and the colors also change depending on your speed so you know whether you are going fast or slow there's always a subconscious uh, glance that you can just have on the screen and you'll understand where you're at on your speed levels electric doesn't mean just everything going digital right it's like a good combination of both so that whatever is there right now people still understand uh as a user that okay i'm not going into something completely new but if you have to worry about things there are some really big things to worry about like what would happen if a roadside mechanic connected a 220 240 volt line to an electric motorcycle so then you would definitely fry your electronics you would get into quite a bit of a safety scenario where the cells are exposed to very high voltages and then that leads to a you know catastrophic failure fires on the battery pack things like that such a scenario the vehicle and the battery pack still needs to continue to be able to withstand this kind of torture and that is something that we have built into our vehicles as well fuse on a battery pack right as part of a battery management system is intend to operate within a you know a second or two seconds the electrical systems are meant to operate in a few hundred of hundreds of milliseconds and then there are software protections that you know can kick in in microseconds right and we've over time over 13 generations of the battery management system we've built this capability where you can push these battery packs to the limits and it's just a simple reset that is done internally and it's back we've tried to make it as full proof as possible Foolproofing an electric vehicle means we have to talk about 
range anxiety. And the F-77, when it was unveiled, was claimed to have a range of 130 to 140 kilometers. And apparently, that number has gotten better. We've got some fundamental upgrades on the battery, so the range can be expected to be higher. Well, how much higher, you ask? UV claim over 200 kilometers. That would make it the range champion in the two-wheeler EV market. And the promise is all the more exciting because... What we put out or what we talk about is going to be pretty much what you can expect on the road. Then there is the ultra-compact onboard charger and a portable, fast charger that can fit in your backpack to make your rides a bit more flexible and cool. And the F-77 has looked cool. But for a startup to design a cool-looking motorcycle and actually pushing into production is a very different story. And along the way, some changes were made. Small changes. The distinctive headlamp design of the F-77 was asked to be changed by the suppliers to make it easier for production. And with a bit of give and take, a solution was found. Like it? So the F-77 has gotten much closer to us. So when can we sample it? We've started um, activities on the production side. A couple of months back, we acquired a facility to uh, start producing vehicles. In our current facility here, we do volumes in terms of tens of vehicles. But now that is going to ramp up into hundreds and thousands. And we are being conservative on our production plans as well. Two quarters of production is for us to optimize fine-tune production. And quarters three onwards is when we sort of uh, exponentially scale up production. So we're looking at about, say, 15,000 vehicles in year one and uh, as early as uh, quarter one 2022 is what we are targeting right now. Since we met Ultraviolet, there's been a slight change of plans. Because of Omicron, the launch is now delayed to the second quarter of 2022. As for the prices, this sporty EV that's promising 200 kilometers of range are expected to be under 3 lakhs. So, how will it fare against the TVS Apache RR310 and the KTM 250 Duke? That's something we hope to find out real soon.